And Voss joins us now to break down what the spinoff means for the future of the business. It's good to have you. I feel like we've been talking about the Sando spinoff forever. I've asked you every single quarter. It must be a big milestone that this is finally happening. It is, Sarah, and great to be with you uh, today. You know, as you know, we've been under a, a big transformation of Novartis over the last five years, and this really brings that transformation to a close. We've done over $100 billion of tra transactions, exiting Consumer Health. We spun off Alcon, exited Roche Stake. Now that we spin off Sandoz, Novartis is now a pure play innovative medicines company. It's the positioning we think is best suited for us to generate long-term gains and returns for our shareholders and also for the world with our medicines. So we're excited for this moment, and we think Sandoz can be a leading generics business for the long term. What does a pure play core pharma business mean? Does it mean that we could see more acquisitions? Are we going to see more investment in research and development? A couple of things, Sarah. First, we've focused down to four core therapeutic areas, cardiovascular disease, neuroscience, immunology, and oncology. Uh, so we're going to continue to invest in those areas, internal R&D, where we invest 9 to $10 billion a year, and also continue to look at BDNL and M&A. But we also have these new technology platforms, areas like radioligand therapies, cell and gene therapies, as well as RNA therapeutics. And we're planning to invest further in those areas as well to bring long-term opportunities for growth for the company. So we think with that setup, we've got the R&D firepower to grow consistently over time. You've seen two earnings upgrades this year already. So the business is firing on all cylinders. So we're really excited about our future as a pure play company. You mentioned the uh, R&D uh, run rate. What about uh, as a pure play or more pure play company, the idea of M&A uh, in those areas to accelerate things or really even to, uh, to just find well-positioned uh, well uh, companies in, uh, in in areas beyond what you do already. You know, our, our focus remains these bolt-on M&As. We recently did Chinook, which was about a $3 billion acquisition in renal diseases. And I think the opportunity for a company like us will continue to be in that sub $5 billion M&A range. We, of course, look at, at larger deals, but most of the opportunity space in biotech is, I think, in those smaller or bolt-on M&A opportunities. Yeah. Of course, we've seen a pullback in the XBI, and, and that creates opportunities, and we're continuing to look at those. I was just going to say, I mean, don't speak now, but we have this big move up in rates today, and biotech valuations are continuing to plummet, especially these small and mid-cap stocks. So do you, set, do you think this sets up a broader M&A cycle in the industry? I think it, it will certainly create lots of opportunities. I think the tricky thing in our, our sector is it all comes back to science. I mean, we need companies that have, have really sound science, great data, and have done the necessary work to make the investments worthwhile. And as you know, many of these biotechs right now are trading below the cash they have on their balance sheet. Some of that's a reflection of, of the quality of the science. So we're scanning the horizon, looking at all of these companies, trying to find good opportunities that can build up either of those four care therapeutic areas or these new technology platforms. Speaking of M&A, Lilly did a deal today in the radio pharmaceuticals category. They added a more than billion dollar deal. This is now going to be a bigger competitor for you, right? This is a space that you operate in and I think dominate, but you're going to have to deal with a much larger company now with Lilly. Why are radio pharmaceuticals so hot and, and how does the competitive landscape look at this point after this deal? Well, you know, sir, we started the, the space uh, from a therapeutic standpoint all the way back in 2018 with our acquisition of advanced accelerator applications. We have two products now on the market, both trending to be billion dollar plus assets. Um, one of them, Pluvicta, will likely to be a multi billion dollar medicine for prostate cancer. So we think radioligand therapies can become really one of the foundational therapies to treat solid tumors in the cancer space. But this is a really complex area. I mean, we've invested in it for five years. It requires us to create medicines that are radioactive, that have five days of shelf life, and we need to get it to the patient on time within those five days. So very, very complex operations. We welcome the competition, but we think that given all the investments we've made in the last five years, we're well set up to lead the space for the next decade.